Here is a view from my bedroom window. It is snowing outside. Snowing pretty good. So who knows how good lighting <laughs> is going to be for my video, but that's okay. Hello, this is Candy with eyes to jesusblogspotcom bringing you my first 2019 planner setup video. So what planner did I ring in the new year in? What planner am I in? Well, <laughs> brace yourself, I'm in a beauty. I am in a unicorn. Now if you watched my last year New Year's planner set up, you saw that I started in a unicorn in that one too. And that one was uh, for half letter size paper. This year I am starting off in a unicorn that I have actually been wanting for about over a year. And finally was able to get and this is in a, a personal size, which is the same as uh, portable size and uh, can fit also compact size. And this is the planner I am in. So this is a Filofax in the personal size, and this is called the Classic Croc. And uh, this is... Uh, a very, very nice grade Italian calf skin leather that is uh, crocodile embossed. And this is, bar none, the most touchable planner I own. It's even more touchable than the Daytimer Malibus and more touchable than the Filofax Maldens. So I have been wanting this planner for a long time in this color. This is the color Fuchsia. And uh, this is not a cheap planner. The average price on this planner at most places is $220 and then you have to pay shipping. So I kept watching and watching and watching. I was checking eBay as well and I found a deal on Amazon with Amazon Prime that was brand new, really lo lowest price I've seen on these with free two-day shipping and it was cheaper than the used planners of these that I've been watching on eBay. So I got it. There was only one and I got it. And they are available in different colors. You got the fuchsia, and then there's an indigo blue, ebony black, um, fawn, and chestnut. My second favorite, second choice would have been the chestnut, I think, but the fuchsia is the one I really wanted. And this color, the pictures I saw online don't do it justice. I was very, very pleased when I opened it up. It's even better than what I was expecting, so I'm very happy with it. Um, this planner is not, if you're used to a Malden, I was in a Malden before I switched into this one. This is not as floppy as a Malden, but it's not specifically structured either. But uh, So I would call it a semi-structured planner. Um, not floppy, but still quite bendable and the leather is quite trainable. Uh, there of course was a smell when I first got it out of the box. Not bad enough to where I had to you know, set it up to air before I could use it. Um, I was able to use it right away. The smell wasn't horrible. It kind of smelled like uh, firecrackers. And the firecracker smell is almost completely gone now, and the leather smell is really starting to come through. And uh, the firecracker smell subsided very quickly just within the first day of having this out and about. And uh, yeah, let's get into this. And uh, I will give you a very deta detailed planner tour since this is a first tour for 2019 in this beauty. So you got a snap closure. And I just got a text. And since it's a snowy day, I guess I better take a look at that. And it's my husband uh, telling me that he is on his way home from work early. That's a good idea because it is getting progressively worse outside. Uh, so I just texted back, uh, okay. Alright, so continuing on, opening it up. Uh, the rings in here is 7 eighths of an inch, which is fine with me, it works. Uh, these rings, by the way, is, are different than the rings on my other Filofaxes. I have two originals, I have one Safiano, I have one Patterns and two Maldens, and on all those Filofaxes they're riveted in. This one is not riveted in. These look like they're removable, but not removable like with the Franklin Covey hex screw system. There seems to be a metal base plate attached to the spine, and then the rings looks like they clip 
over the base plate. So it looks like the rings in the classic croc uh, are possibly very likely replaceable uh, should there become a problem with your rings. So that's nice. So yeah, seven eighths of an inch, plenty of room for me. And here's what it looks like when you open it up. And in here on the front, I love how the logo is gold embossed. That's really pretty. And we have a zipper pocket here. And look at this. We have a leather tab here that goes over your zipper pull. So you're guaranteed not to have your zipper scratching your front page. I love that detail. I'm very thankful for that detail. And uh, this zipper pocket goes all the way back. And inside the zipper pocket, I just got uh, a few um, uh, stacks of like uh, sticky notes of a few different sizes in here. And then inside this slit pocket, I just have a pretty piece of scrapbook paper sticking out. And behind that are some uh, extra week on two page inserts that are for later in the year that I don't currently have in my rings. And now moving to the back pockets, this is where most of the action is pocket wise. I, I like that the action is in the back on this instead of the front. It's great. So in this slip pocket, I got again another scrap paper just for prettiness and behind it are some more week on two page inserts for later in the year that aren't in the rings yet. So I have all of 2019 week on two pages in this planner but only one month at a time in the rings and then the rest reside in these two slip pockets and it works great. So I'm really happy with that. And then we've got seven card slots. So in these, I got um, a washi card, a sticky notes, a little journaling card, some whole reinforcement stickers, Avery labels, Avery dots, and uh, some a smaller little sticky note and a couple of different sizes of uh, flags. Now, here comes one of my favorite parts about this planner. Are you ready for my favorite pocket? Ta-da! I love this! One of the problems I've had with having personal size planners is there's some full size sheets of paper that I, that I really would feel more comfortable keeping in my planner and with me. And uh, I didn't want to scan those into my computer and then shrink them down and reprint them out. I wanted the convenience to just be able to have a full size letter sheet of paper in my planner. So inside here, there is a contract. There is a medical paper for some oral surgery that my husband's been uh, getting done. He's finishing it up. This started last year. And there are bills waiting to be paid. And then there's a couple of recipes that my daughter and I printed out that we are experimenting with. Trying and tweaking and perfecting to how we like it. So those are in here. I love this. If I'm out and about getting the mail, I can just stick the mail in there. If I want to put a letter size sheet of paper in here, which most of the papers in here are, I just fold it in half and it goes right in. So I have always wanted a planner that has this open. I have a uh, half letter size planner that does that. I have a pocket size planner that does that. And I finally have a personal size planner that does that. So this is a personal size planner, but I can put half letter and full sheet papers in. Perfect. All right. And this this planner comes with one pen loop, and this is an improvement over the molded. It's an it's a fully elasticized pen loop, so you can put all sorts of different sized pens in here. It stretches nicely, and then it's got a little leather flap here on the outside just to decorate it. And the flap is not connected to the pen loop, so it doesn't uh, affect how much you can stretch it. So you can just have the flap sitting kind of out, or you can do what I do, and I just clip right over the flap to keep it against the pen loop. So whichever you'd like. Now let's get inside this baby. So my front dashboard, and I made it, it's a laminated scrapbook paper with a card on it that says choose happy. And then uh, I just got into some of my sticker books and at the top I put on the letters INTJ because I am an INTJ, Myers-Briggs personality type. And then down here I have the word push. Push is my word of the year, and that word didn't actually come to me until the first of the year. I couldn't really think of or come up with a word until then, and then that came to me. And uh, so push and being an INTJ, they're interrelated with my personal goals for this year. All right, and then on the other side of my dashboard or welcome page is our current family picture. This picture was taken on Thanksgiving. We generally try to take family photos every Thanksgiving. And then um, the other sheet here is a photo of my husband and I from our wedding when we got married in 1997, 1997, I don't know why that was hard to say. 
And then on the other side, I just have a journaling card, one of those journaling cards that has uh, a calendar on it. And then I have, and by the way, uh, this is with a homemade top loading pocket. I didn't want to use an already existing top loading pocket because they're kind of frosty. So I took some acetate that I had and just clear taped it to some scrapbook paper on the back and created uh, this into a top loading pocket so that uh, my husband's my picture can be taken out. It's not in there forever. Okay, and then this laminated sheet here is a poem. It's called Do the Next Thing. It is written by Anonymous. This poem's been around for a long time. So uh, you can pause and read it here if you'd like. And uh, it's my favorite poem. It's very motivational. And I just made a tab on top of it out of some washi tape. And the reason being is if I grab that tab and flip, brings me to my grocery list. And I'm about to get groceries, snow and all. So this is my grocery list. And then over here on the back of that laminated sheet with the poem on it are just some uh, kind of longer size line sticky notes. I get these from Dollar Tree and they're in various different colors. They are super, super handy. So uh, I keep those there and I just write down on it. And then when that's all used up, I just rip it off and move to the next sheet. And I keep extra of these in the front zipper pocket. All right, and then yes, I have my grocery list. And then after that, there's just several other sheets of paper. I just have a magnetic clip keeping them together. These are for future grocery lists. And this sheet is for writing down stuff that I run out of to go on uh, next week's grocery list. And uh, these the sheets of paper here are just from uh, magnetic uh, notepads that you know are made to just stick on your refrigerator. I love, that's another reason I love personal size planners, is magnetic notepads. Their papers fit in here almost perfectly in personal size planners. Uh, some of them are slightly too wide, so I just trim them more narrow, and then I cut it at the bottom, punch them, and put them in. Some are slightly more narrow, like this one is, so I just cut it at the bottom and pop it in. Some are almost exact. But uh, they're really thin paper, and they're really pretty. And I like that because these are papers that I use and throw away when I'm done, so they don't need to be high quality and thick. And by having these as some of my uh, filler paper in here, it, I can have more paper in here while taking up less space on the rings because they don't create as much bulk. So that is one of the top reasons why I switch to personal anyways. All right, so moving past those, I have five main dividers. These are all five homemade dividers that I made for this planner. Not for this specific one. I made these before I knew I was getting this planner. My husband uh, got it for me, which is so awesome. And yes, I do happen to have the best husband in the world. But uh, these are the dividers that I made for the 2019 planner. So my first divider is my homemaking section. So it's labeled home. And the card on there, be always blooming. And these are just made of scrapbook paper and little cards that came in a scrapbook paper kit. And of course they're laminated and I cut out tabs and I labeled them with Carpe Diem labels. Alright, and then the first thing in my homemaking section are my daily chores. And then on the other side of that sheet of paper are my children's cleaning chores and my children's table chores. And then over here are my deep cleaning and organization projects. And then I have my master grocery list, which has a little top tab flag on it, because if I grab it and flip over past it, it brings me to my menu for the week, so I can turn right to my menu. And I plan our breakfasts, lunches, and suppers, and side dishes for the whole week. So if you'd like to take a look at my current menu plan, you can pause and try to read it if you can decipher my writing. Right, and then after that, I have a list of breakfast ideas. This helps me when I'm making my menu plan. And then I have a list of lunch ideas. And then a list of supper ideas. And my breakfast, lunch, and supper ideas uh, also include suggested sides, not just main dishes. And then after that, I have my old Thanksgiving menu that we did. And then the other side was the New Year's menu that we did. So I like keeping that back here because we do generally the same menu each year. I just maybe change it up every once in a while here and there. And then after that, we come to this page. It says recipe sections. And you notice there's a little flag or tab sticking to the side. 
because I can turn and grab this to come to my recipes that are in my planner. And this year I have my recipes categorized and page numbered. Not alphabetized though, but categorized and page numbered. So this is my table of contents to my categories. And my categories are quick go-to's, breads and breakfasts, main meals, sides, baking, and special. So and I'll just flip through really quick and uh, read you the recipes that I have in here. So under quick go-to's I have bread, biscuits, pizza crust, chocolate, vanilla, or other types of chia pudding, pancake syrup. Under breads and breakfasts I have almond bread, banana bread, persimmon bread, egg bread, unleavened bread, granola, egg casserole, baked pancakes, baked custard. And under main meals I have baked chicken, baked fish, pizza casserole, cheeseburger casserole, chicken and dumplings, crock pot beef stew, creamy potato soup, cowboy beans, crock pot chili, hamburger stew, salmon loaf, meat loaf, no noodle lasagna, lasagna, zucchini casserole, white chicken chili, lentils and rice. And then underneath sides I have Butternut squash, baked spaghetti squash, baked acorn squash, roasted Brussels sprouts, sweet potato fries, sweet spinach salad. And under baking, I have ginger cookies, oatmeal cookies, blondies. And then under special, I have bread stuffing, broccoli marinade, sweet potato casserole, pumpkin pie, coconut vanilla or chocolate custard pie, cabbage salad, election cake, cherry limeade, cranberry or other type of cobblers, and Russian apple pie. So these are not all my recipes, but these are my main recipes. And a lot of my recipes I don't need to have in here because they're in my head. And um, recipes that I don't cook as often, I just have written elsewhere. Or if I'm testing some new ones out there in here, and then uh, I can just go to cookbooks or other binders for them. But yeah, most of what I cook is either in my head or in here. And this brings me to my next divider. This is my homeschool section. I am a homeschooling mother of four. My oldest is an adult and graduated and on his own. And uh, he homeschooled beginning to end. And then my other three are still at home and still in homeschool. I have uh, a seventh grader, a ninth grader, and an eleventh grader this year. So this is my homeschool section. It's labeled school and it says love all the moments. And all of my children will be homeschooled beginning to end. All right, and then, uh, then the first three pages are actually printouts that I printed out from AmblesideOnline.com, and that's for Charlotte Mason homeschooling. Now, I homeschool via the Trivium, but the Trivium and Charlotte Mason dovetail and intersect a lot. So I always like looking at the uh, Charlotte Mason Ambleside Online suggested curricula or curriculum for each uh, year for the students. So I just have these in here for references or in case we want to change something up in one of our subjects or we need more material because we finished early. So I have basic o their basic overview for year 11. And then I also printed out their basic overview for years 9 and 7. And then after that, I have our current homeschool schedule. And then after that is our uh, homeschool course of study, basically our current curriculum chart for the year. After that is our current copywork assignments. And then our current 2019 reading lists. And then our current 2019 Bible essay topics. And then this page over here is uh, Monday school. You can call it lesson planning. And then lesson planning for Tuesday and Wednesday. Lesson planning for Thursday. And we homeschool four days a week year round. However, we tend to get in of it quite often light homeschool on Fridays as well. And then I just have this notebook paper here, and it's got some videos, some educational homeschool videos that uh, we watch every once in a while, and I'm tracking them here. And then I just have some more blank note sheet, notebook paper for uh, any other notes. And then this brings me to my third section, which is labeled budget, and it is my budget section. And it says, make yourself proud. So going inside here, I have our budget guide which I can't really show you. 
and uh, it lists our reoccurring expenses and which reoccurring expense we pay on which paycheck. And then after that, I have several sheets of uh, just basic paper. Some of it's file facts, filler paper, and some of it's just uh, notepad paper that I trimmed, punched, and put in. So obviously, I'm showing you blank ones. But the preceding pages are uh, our current budget for the next few months. And I don't do inserts, as you can see from my budgets. I just do paper. And at the top of the paper, I write down the date of that check that I'm doing the budget on. And then I write down all of the expenses for my budget guide that we have to pay on that check. I then turn to my calendar and I look at my calendar for the week and I see what's coming up, what special events, uh, dentist appointments, etc. As we do got one coming up that I need to hold back some money for and then that would get put in that budget as well. And then I tally it all up and make sure it's less than our paycheck of course. And uh, then when it comes around time for paying bills, which I usually do on Thursdays or Fridays, I can uh, see which bills I need to be paying on that check. And uh, then I regularly check our bank, and as soon as things clear in the bank, I mark them off here. Meanwhile, I keep a true total of what we really have in the bank here, even if things haven't cleared in the bank, and the bank shows a different number. So my husband knows if he wants to know how much money we really have in the bank, check my budget section. Okay, and then my next section is labeled notes, and this is my notebook, and it says shine bright. And inside my notebook, the first page is table of contents. And so the pages all the way up to, I kind of have a polka dot tab sticking out, are numbered. And on those numbered pages, I have gift ideas, kids grocery week checklist, stock list, perpetual calendar, family information, codes, and tracking. And so inside the, this section of the numbered pages, I also have another top tab that's blue. If I turn to that one, that brings me directly to family information. Meanwhile, if I turn past to the polka dot blue tab, that brings me to um, directions and contacts. I have written down directions how to get to places that are a little tricky for me, just as a reminder to read before I drive there. And then after that, I have our contacts, our phones and addresses and whatnot. I don't keep a complete contacts list in my phones. I've always preferred to have it written down and in my planner. And then after that, there is a side a red tab. And when you turn to that, that's my brain dump. So I have several things here that are still in my brain dump. There are notes on things that I'm trying, uh, notes on some ideas I want to look into, etc. And then after that, there's just a whole bunch of uh, blank sheets of paper. Most of it is the uh, magnetic list pad paper again because it's uh, pretty and it's very thin so it doesn't bulk up my rings. So that's where I go into my planner when I need more filler paper. But my last main divider that I made is labeled planning and this is where we get into the planner section of my planner and this says BU. And going inside here um, the first sheet of paper is a daytime portable birthdays and anniversaries sheet. And I mainly really have it in here because on the other side is a calendar for 2019. Alright, and then we're up to my month on two pages. Uh, I have, of course, all the month on two pages in here for the year 2019. Um, and I am using daytime or portable size garden path for the month on two pages. So here's what the uh, Garden Path January divider looks like. And I'll show you all the dividers in a moment too. But anyways, and then going inside, here is my month on two pages, January. And then I turn to my Today marker, and my page marker is a Daytimer Today marker. And uh, it brings me to my Week on Two Pages. My Week on Two Pages are not Garden Path. They are Daytimer, but they are Daytimer Breast Cancer Awareness. One, because they're pink. I like pink. And two, the layout just works perfectly for me. So, uh, and then even though it's Week on Two Pages, I mostly plan day by day. I'll write some things down on future days here and there, but I don't fully plan out the week. So today is Thursday as I'm filming this. And I just keep a little flag up here above what current day it is. So my eyes can go right to Thursday and not be scanning the page. And uh, let me turn to a uh, blank week on two pages so I can show you uh, what they look like. Aren't they cute? So you can see on the left side is to-do. And there's like spaces, like 11 spaces here for to-dos. Lots of room for to-dos. 
And then on the right side is timed appointments or schedule, and they go from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then you have a blank slot after the 5 p.m. if you need to write in something later. Like uh, when I had my New Year's Eve party, uh, that started at 7, so I wrote in the number 7 there. Because uh, even though these are 2019 inserts, week on two pages for 2019 starts with December 31st because that's on a Monday. So I was really excited that I got to start into these inserts on New Year's Eve. Okay, so yeah, and then like I mentioned earlier, I just have a month's worth of Week on Two Pages in the rings right now, and then the rest of my Week on Two Pages are in this planner, they're just not in the rings. They're inside the uh, front and back side pockets that I showed you earlier. Now, along with my Week in Two Pages, I keep a few other things besides my page finder. I keep my laminated master schedule, and my master schedule, the holes are slit, so they just pop in and out of the rings the same way my page finder does. I also have a journaling card with my main things, my to-do list that I like to keep there too, and then of course my page finder. All right, now let's show, let's, I'm going to show you the rest of the dividers for Garden Path. So here's February. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And I love how they are not holiday themed. Okay, and then after that I have a sheet of uh, grid paper filofax on the back and it says future planning 2020 plus that I wrote on the top and I already have one thing written down on here and this will fill up. And then after that, I just have um, a top-loading pocket. It's currently nothing in it, but occasionally I have like a coupon or a receipt or something that I like to stick in there. And then after that, I have uh, one of those credit card inserts or business card inserts. You can fit three cards in there. I just use it to hold doodads. I got some uh, tabs, some flags, and a couple of spare pen loops in there currently. And then after that, we have a back page lifter. This is a Franklin Covey compact size back page lifter. And I just have some extra tabs or flags I can grab on the go. And some of them have reoccurring things written on them that I can just stick on my schedule in the proper time slots when needed. And then that's the end of my planner. So I am very much enjoying this. Um, I'm probably going to do another video or two about this specific uh, planner cover for those who are interested and are considered getting one. Uh, it is very, very well worth the investment. I'm very pleased with it. So, hope you enjoyed my uh, current 2019 setup. Have a blessed day.